This is chapter one in the series of reading my email news. Ta-da! Yahoo Sports Read and React, brought to you by Yahoo Sports. Get ready for the last dance, too, this time with Tom Brady. Isn't there a little soon for that? Roll mask. Nick Saban encourages Bama fans to wear masks to help get football back. <sighs> Did Dak turn down a five-year, $175 million deal? NBC says yes. Cowboys agents, Cowboys and agents say no. He probably did. Chase Briscoe wins Xfinity race day after learning on FaceTime his wife miscarried. Aww. The Time I Met My Hero. Readers Share Their Stories by Jay Busby. Yesterday we brought you the story <coughs> of young Cooper, a Tony Hawk fan who connected with his hero through the timely intervention of a kind FedEx driver. The update to their story is below. <clears throat> so there was a boy who wanted to send his skateboard to Tony Hawk, and he asked a FedEx driver to do it, even though nobody knew where Tony Hawk lived. So the FedEx driver made a TikTok video, and Tony Hawk uh, contacted him and sent his skateboard to the kid, and happy ending. We asked you to share the time you met your hero, and boy, did you deliver. We got dozens of stories from you fine folks, and here are four of the best to get your weekend started right. Walter Payton. My late father gave me Walter Payton's book, Never Die Easy, for my birthday in 2001. Inside was tucked a letter from my father. Below was an excerpt. One Saturday, when we were pretty young, we went to the Bears camp in Lake Forest. They opened the practice to the public with an autograph session prior to practice as the players were heading out to the field. As I was locking the car, you yelled, Dad, there he is, there's Walter. Before I could tell you not to bother him because he was late for practice, you were running across the lot with your pen and pad in hand. Walter was walking across the lot, wearing only a pair of shorts, carrying his helmet and jersey. By the time I got over to where you were, Walter was down on one knee talking to you, asking you questions and signing your pad. He could have cared less that he was... couldn't have cared less that he was late for practice, and for a few brief moments, Tom Weber Jr. was the most important thing in Walter Payton's life. As I read the book, I realized that young fans were such a big part of my life and thought I'd share one of my many fond memories from your childhood. Tom Weber, Jr. <coughs> Pete Rose. My story is from around 1970 or so, when I was seven or eight years old, living in Vermont. My family would drive up to Montreal to watch the Expos play at Jerry Park before the Olympic Stadium was built. We usually watched a weekend series and spent one night at the Queen Elizabeth Hotel in the city, and as that is where the visiting teams would stay. This particular weekend, the Reds were in town to play the Expos. Early in the game, Pete Rose hit a foul ball that my dad caught behind the third baseline in the visiting team's dugout. The next time Rose was in the on-deck circle, I brought the ball back down to him and asked him to sign it. Not surprisingly, he said, Not now, kid. I felt like the idiot I was. I felt like the idiot I was. After the game, back at the hotel with the ball still in my hand, I stepped onto the elevator. Pete Rose was already there riding up, and he saw me and said, Okay, kid, I'll sign it now. I still have the ball. Jeff Kelly. Andre the Giant. My younger cousin Callie was ten years old when I took her and her sister to Dothan, Alabama to see a battle royal with most of the, most of the top local wrestlers competing to be the last man standing. However, for this match, there was a special guest star, Andre the Giant. Callie decided she wanted to try to get Andre's autograph. At the end of the match, she raced from the stands to, down to the ring and wound up directly in Andre's path back to the dressing room. Being ten years old and small for her age, she was barely visible in the crowd and Andre plodded right by her. She decided quickly that if she couldn't get his autograph, she would at least pat him on the back as he went by. The problem was she couldn't reach his back and wound up slapping him on the butt. <laughs> to this day, she is the only person I have ever seen perform that particular feat. Warren Wright Greg Lamont. The year was 1989. Greg Lamont was racing on the Coors Light ADR team. A small circuit race was being held on Miami Beach, part of the tour of the, American, the America's Race Series. I approached Greg after the race to get an autograph on a magazine. He was still sweating and obviously frustrated with his fitness, but was amicable as I hesitantly approached him. He looked up and asked, Can I help you? Yes, sir, Mr. Lamont. Could you please sign this? Mr. Lamont is my dad. I am Greg. What's your name? I told him my name, and he signed the magazine. I said, good luck at the Tour de France. 
He laughed and said, yeah, right, kid. Have a good one. Holy cow. I just met Greg Lamont. I was on cloud nine, cloud nine for the next month. A couple of months later, he won the 1989 Tour de France. I was beside myself. James Holloway. Thanks to all who sent in their stories. You are some lucky folks, and your heroes are lucky to have met you. Have a great weekend, friends. Update. Cooper received several of Tony Hawk's skateboards. Huh. Good for him. NBA mock draft. Anthony Edwards moves to number one. How Tiger vs. Phil Part 2 can be better than the original. How do you call a baseball game halfway around the world? Well, I guess you just watch it. Join and welcome the new head coach of FC Cincy Japstan. And that's not real. Okay. Okay. Delete. Lori Laughlin. Oh, let's do this one first.